What's happening, guys? Welcome into another boxing breakdown and prediction show for this Saturday night's WBC Bantamweight clash between Nordin Ubali and Nanito De Nero over in Carson, California. So let's get into it. Now, the odds are probably going to surprise a lot of people ahead of this one as the relatively unknown Ubali comes in as the heavy minus 285 favourite here against De Nair. You know, who's basically got a resume as stacked as his Filipino counterpart, Manny Pacquiao. De Nair, incredibly well-known fighter, arguably former pound-for-pound pound number one as well. So... To see him priced up as a big plus 215 underdog, you know, and this one is on the face of it like a little surprise, and especially seeing as he comes off that electric performance against one of the most feared men in all of boxing as well, and the monster himself, Noya Inoue. But I think those odds are justified here. Rubali, very technically underrated fighter. You know, and if we go back to the kind of Victor Chinian, Fernando Montiel, Jorge Orca days, that version of the Nito De Nair, you know, while he was incredible, that's a long time ago now. Since then... He's had a relatively unsuccessful run up at Super Bantam, you know, and Featherweight before coming back down to compete at the World Boxing Super Series. Uh, that Bantamweight tournament two and a half years ago. Now, ahead of that tournament, two fighters stood out in particular. Number one seed, Noya Inoue, who we just mentioned, and number two seed, Ryan Burnett, who actually owned the WBA Super Bantamweight title ahead of Inoue at that time. Now, a lot of people were also high on Zelani Tete and Manny Rodriguez as dark horses for that competition as well, but as far as I could tell, no one was tipping Anito De Nair to do much in that tournament. You know, he just come off two losses over his last three to Jesse Magdaleno and Carl Frampton, respectively. So a lot of people saw him as more of a benchmark level fighter for some of the younger fighters competing in the tournament. But that certainly wasn't how it panned out. You know, in the first round quarterfinals, Ryan Burnett chose De Nair as his dance partner. Ryan Burnett, incredibly gifted multi-world champion down at Bantamweight, started fast in that fight. I personally felt Burnett was winning clearly before he ruptured his back, throwing an overhand right in the fourth round. You know, one of the most bizarre injuries you're ever likely to see in a boxing ring at just 26, effectively ended Burnett's career. So, you know, really tough loss. It was really tough to see that out of a fighter, especially one as talented as Burnett was as well. And you know, him not being too far from me over in Belfast, so he definitely didn't get the luck of the Irish in that one. But, you know, take nothing away from De Nair. He did what he needed to do. You know, showed the kind of class he individually is as well with his post-fight comments after the fight. You know, but again, though, a lot of people, including myself, felt he got a bit of a buy in that fight, obviously, due to Burnett's injury. And that Zolani Tete fight, who was due to fight him next in the semi-finals, that might put an end to his run. But again, Teddy pulled out not long before that fight was due to take place. He was claiming a so shoulder injury in that fight. So Donaire got another by being put up against the standing replacement, Stefan Young, who Donaire, you know, duly dispatched with an absolutely monstrous left hook in the sixth round to move into the final. Now, you know, again, we had a situation where on one side, the number one seed in the tournament, Noya anyway, was facing some quality opposition on his way up, Juan Carlos Piano. He knocked him out in the first round. ABF world champion Manny Rodriguez, he knocked him out in the second round. So, you know, myself included, people are obviously forgiven for thinking that Donaire might well get chalk lined in that final taking place over in Japan of all places in his native country. But, you know, what an absolutely sensational performance from the Filipino. Like, Donair turned back the clock. You know, he gave the monster easily the toughest fight of his entire career today, put him in some really deep waters in that fight, and, you know, and went the distance, only the second man to do so against Inouye over a 12-round fight. By contrast, you know, Ubali hasn't done anything nearly as impressive as to what the has achieved, both historically or recently. But, you know, he slowly accumulated noteworthy fights, uh, noteworthy wins, I should say, against quality opposition. And, you know, he was actually fighting on the undercard of that Inouye the final over in Japan. He showed his quality in his title win over Rashid Warren back in 2019. He's since reeled off two successful defences, but, you know, faces a big step up here against Donair on Saturday. Ubali, though, is a seriously high-level operator inside the ring, very technical fighter. He sometimes takes a while to get going in there, but when he does find his groove, he's incredibly fluid, and that style does present a ton of problems for Donair, in my opinion. Donair can be outboxed. You know, Rigando did it, Magdaleno did it, Frampton did it, Burnett was doing it. And Donair almost thrives more on fighters looking to come forward and exchange big shots with them, like Monty, like Ark, and most definitely like Inouye. So I think it's deceptive to say because of what he managed against Inouye that that will automatically translate here. Ubali will almost certainly not be looking to come forward and exchange big shots with Donair in this one. And I think the likeliest outcome in this fight is Ubali by decision at minus 150. 
that's not a great price, however. And to be honest, you know, while in my mind it is the most likely scenario here, the books are priced it accordingly. And at minus 150, it really presents no value to me. The bet I like more purely from a value standpoint is Donito Denaire rounds four to six at plus 1400. We mentioned already how Bali takes a while to get going in fights before settling into a rhythm. And one thing Donaire still has left is a ton of power. Stefan Young was twitching in that WBSA semi-final. The referee didn't even give a count. The punch was so concussive. So, you know, if Donaire can catch your Bally cold here, it's likely going to come early. And I think Donaire by stoppage in rounds four to six, a plus 1,400, is definitely worth a small play in this one. Does the Filipino have one last great performance left in them? You know, it is really hard to know. That Inuit performance was almost like he dialed back the clock 10 years to his super bantamweight days. But, you know, if the stoppage does come, it likely comes early. So, I'll roll the dice here and take the air by stoppage runs four to six at plus fourteen hundred free play for Saturday. Now we have a premium play up for this weekend's other big fight over in Las Vegas between Devin Haney and Jorge Linares. Join us for that as we've added plus seventy three point four seven percent over our last thirty two bucks on top plays and you know looking at another big one this weekend. That'll wrap things up for this edition of the Boxing Prediction Show. As always, leave us your thoughts. You can also catch me over on Twitter at the Sports Wolf eighty three and at my handicapper page Kevin Dolan over at Wage Talk. We'll be back next week. Previewing Badu Jack versus John Pascal and Jared Hurd versus Lewis Arias. Might even cover, you know, the Mayweather Logan Paul fight we'll see. So join us for that. And as always, thanks for listening. Till next time, Slana Walia.